What happens when you take three copies of the same Lego set and combine them with your own parts to build a massive custom diorama? Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Brick. I'm Adam, AKA Ant Bandit, and today we're gonna be building the ultimate Lego avatar mock. No, 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 not that Avatar. We're talking about the blue people. Of course, James Cameron's film Avatar released back in 2009, which is wild to think that that's over 10 years ago now. And finally in 2022, we're seeing the release of the sequel, Avatar The Way of Water, which personally I am really excited to go see. 2022 also saw the launch of the new Lego Avatar theme, which has proven to be a really unique and interesting line of Lego sets. Here's my favorite set of the line. This is Toric Mokto and the Tree of Souls. And this is honestly just a really cool set in my opinion. You get a beautiful build for this tree, you get a big dragon, some landscaping. It's also a great way to get a bunch of those new Navi minifigures, and they even include a Pandoran horse. Nay. So far, it seems like there are a lot of fans who are generally enjoying this new theme. But there is one thing that I find really interesting. Personally, I have yet to see any other AFOLs or members of the LEGO community take these creatures and minifigures and really incorporate them into a giant grand scale diorama or mock or really anything at all. I haven't seen any avatar displays or mocks at any recent LEGO conventions, and that may all come eventually. But for now, that's what some might call an opportunity. I will be the first AFOL to build a giant avatar minifig scale diorama. When anybody searches Lego avatar mock, I want them to come to this video. As a filmmaker, I'm also a huge fan of James Cameron and the world of Avatar. I love this movie, so I want this build to be impressive and really capture the essence of those stunning visuals that we see in the movies. This won't just be a static build either. I'll be incorporating some different lighting elements and filming it all with some really cinematic footage to make it feel like a scene from the movie just come to life. If all of that sounds like a lot, it is. This is definitely gonna be a huge challenge for me to accomplish. But thankfully, I have some help from our friends over at eBay who are sponsoring this video. They were kind enough to send us three copies of the Avatar Tree of Souls set, which is absolutely incredible. This project would not be happening without eBay's support. So big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. And we'll be talking more about them later on. I'll be using parts and minifigs from these sets to build my own version of the Tree of Souls. I'm gonna build a giant tree that's twice as large as what you see here in the official version. It'll have a ton of detail and be a lot more accurate to what you see in the film. Now I will be using parts from my own personal collection to help build this mock. Even though we will largely use most of the pieces here, I won't be restricting myself to use only these pieces. However, if you would like to see a building challenge in a future video where I'm only allowed to use parts from one or multiple copies of one official set, feel free to leave a comment comment down below and let us know which set you would pick. With all that said, let's talk about the plan. The main focus will be that Tree of Souls. It's gonna be the central prominent element in this layout. We'll be using references from the movie along with taking some design inspiration from the official set to build something that's even more impressive. We'll add a lot more branches and more of those dangling pink elements and raise the entire tree up on a small rocky hill that has some large roots leading away from it. We'll also build some extra terrain elements with foliage to make this location feel more complete before adding our crowd of Navi minifigures gathered around the base of the tree. Now in the movie, we see the ground around the tree pulse and glow with this bioluminescent energy. We're gonna be recreating this effect by building our mock on top of a transparent surface and lighting it from underneath with some programmable LED lighting. For the surface, I picked up a piece of clear acrylic from Home Depot for about 40 bucks. I elevated the acrylic slightly above my table surface so I could fit the LED light strips underneath, and I covered it in tissue paper to add some texture and really catch that light that was shining through. After some lighting tests, this is starting to look really cool, but now it's time to start building. I began by building the main trunk of the tree, and this was definitely a difficult process. I wanted something that was strong, but also had a lot of natural shaping to it using these snot building techniques. After a lot of struggle, I landed on a design technique that I liked to have the main trunk separate into two different branches. 
For the hanging tree foliage, I used the same design seen in the official set. These look really great, so I didn't see any reason to really alter them too much. Now with the tree finally complete, I started on the rock work around the base. I built some large roots using two by two bricks attached to flex tubes so that I could bend them into some more natural shapes. Next, here's a look at some background terrain elements that I put together to decorate the perimeter of the build. Now that all the elements are finished, all that was left was to set everything up and film it. But that's when I ran into a problem. I kept looking at this build and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still missing. I even showed it to a few friends of mine and even though they were impressed by the overall scale of things, they still felt like something was lacking too. I kept racking my brain trying to figure out what I could add to make this even more impressive and that's when I realized exactly what my problem was. I had focused so much on creating this massive scenery that was just epic in scope that I totally neglected adding any kind of story element. There was no conflict or meaningful character interactions that would really draw your attention in to look at this build any closer. It goes to show that it doesn't matter what you're creating or just how technically impressive it is, the end result will be a lot more impactful if you have those strong story elements for people to connect with. And no, that is not a subtle dig at the movie Avatar, but I think it's good for all of us to remember just how important the principles of story are. And so I decided to connect the story of my build directly to the events in the movie by recreating the final sequence where Jake Sully transfers his mind into his Avatar body. I even built some of the floating jellyfish that represent the spirit of Awa because that's a really important element of this final scene. After hours of hard work, the build is finally done. But before we check out the end result, let me tell you a bit about our sponsor, eBay. Now you might be wondering how I have so many extra parts to work on big mocks like this one. And that's because I've spent years building my collection and buying Lego on websites like eBay. Personally, I use eBay a ton to find great deals on vintage Lego sets that I grew up with that are really hard to find anywhere else. You can find all kinds of things like completed sets, even rare specific minifigures, and great deals on bulk lots of brick that you can use to build whatever you want. And it's not just for finding rare and retired Lego sets. You can also use eBay to find great deals on current and brand new themes like the Avatar line. It doesn't matter if you're looking for retro collectibles or the latest and greatest, you can find all of it on eBay. Again, thanks to them for sponsoring this video. They've been really supportive of these big project videos lately and we've really enjoyed working with them. So definitely go and check eBay out. And now it's time to look at the final build. Here is the Tree of Souls. And here we have it. I am super proud of how this whole thing turned out. It looks fantastic under lighting, especially with that up lighting on the ground kind of pulsing and glowing. It just pushes that presentation over the top. Here you can see how it compares to the official version and you can see just how massive that size difference is. And I think it turned out really well. I had an absolute blast building this. So I hope you enjoyed seeing how this process came together. Thank you so much for watching. And to James Cameron, because I know he's probably watching this video. I hope I made you proud. And that's about it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to Beyond the Brick and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this final build. Once again, I'm Adam. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.